Welcome to another episode of the Collector Car Canada Stories Podcast. Uh, just a reminder, we do ha- also have the Car Reviews Podcast. All of the cars that we have available on the site are featured on their own car review video. So it's a lot like our detailed listings, but in video format. But on to today's Collector Car Stories Podcast. Today I have with me my good friend Eddie Kazes. We're sitting in front of Eddie's 1988 Porsche 928. Um, Eddie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Glad Great you're doing here. it. Yeah. Going back, um, I myself, I seem to love all the cars still that were being made new when I got my driver's license. So what were kind of your childhood influences on, in terms of cars? Wow. Uh, childhood you, Like influences. even before you had your license? Um, I didn't have a lot. Um, I, there, were, there were like the Brooklyn. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that was a great move. Of course, um, the viewers might know about this. They wouldn't have known you and I went together. But back in May, you and I attended a talk by Malcolm Bricklin himself. I'm still kind of in awe that we saw him speak. At 85 years old and still full of life and ready to do new things. Uh, I mention it because there's a good gallery of photos of that event on the website. So if anyone's interested... Just go to the what we've seen uh, section of the website under the home page, under the home menu item. And if you scroll back to, I think it was around mid-May when we saw uh, Malcolm Bricklin speak yeah. at the University of Toronto. Yeah. Sorry, so Bricklin, yeah. So it was made in New Brunswick. I think the model years were 74, 75, 76, something like that. It was something so that's before like you that. had your yeah. license, certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so that, would, that stood out as a car when I was in my childhood. Yeah. Um, uh, th- there was a 1970 uh, Pontiac Trans Am white with the blue stripe down the center. 455 SD? SD. Yeah, okay. And I used to go into the Pontiac dealership. It was sitting in the showroom? It was sitting in the showroom. It was a place you walked by? Uh, no, I would always Wait, make it. 1970. Stuff. It was a used car or was it a new car? Uh, good question. Well, I think it was. I'm not going to ask you your age, but in 1970, <laughs> if you were alive, you would have been very young. I was very young. Yeah. Yes. I used to go with my cousin. We used to walk over to the Pontiac dealership there. Just to ogle the cars? Just to look oh, at the I Pontiac love it. I love it. So we, we did that, and uh, I fell in love with the Trans Am. Mm-hmm. And I looked at my cousin and I said, one of these days I'm going to own one of these. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, well, it's funny you're getting that. I, yep. I, I wasn't necessarily leading you to what you're going to tell us, but it was kind of on my mental list of things to talk to you about. Uh, what was the first car you ever bought, Eddie? A 1975 Pontiac Trans Am. 75 Trans Am. Yeah, that was the first car I purchased. So, of course, I knew the answer to that question, and I've seen the car you're talking about several times. And... Uh, I know you didn't buy the car new, because you would have been old enough to drive in 1975 anyway. So, but you you probably were the second owner of the car. I was the second owner. Of the and car. Yeah. the first car you ever bought, and do you know where that car is today? <laughs> Sitting in my garage. You still I, own it. I still own I'm, the car. I'm fascinated. <laughs> That's so neat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I still have the car. Um, periodically, I'll run into some high school friends. Yeah. That, uh, oh my God, you still have the They'll car. They'll say, I wonder if he still has that. You don't still have the Trans Am, yeah. do you? And you say, yeah, I do. Why? Yeah. <laughs> it's that kind of a reaction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you were still in high school when you bought it? I was in high school when I bought it. Um, and uh, owned it ever since. So I know a little bit about that car. We'll have to get a picture up uh, and superimpose it in the video. Um, I know it's a gray car with t roofs. I think it's an automatic transmission. Correct. What? Uh, so if it's Trans Am, I know it's a V8, but what's it got under the hood? It's um, This well, one we can go deep with. This one we can go <laughs> deep with, okay. So it's a 6.6 liter engine, okay, which is so a that's 400. Four, 400, yeah. Yeah, 400 cubic inch. It's Maniac automatic. state of the art of the day, I guess, 400. Yeah, with, uh, they call it the radial tune suspension. Right. Uh, fantastic car. Um, a lot of the people don't realize how nimble the car actually is. It's so heavy okay. that it's actually very nimble. 
with with its weight, I guess it's good at sticking to the road. Oh, it 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 sticks to the road really yeah. well and yeah. it handles well. I, I would say um, not as well as a Corvette at the, at, at its era, but it, it really um, handled well. Okay, and it had a lot of torque. Yeah. On there. Um, Do you know what the horsepower and torque ratings would be in the neighborhood of? I'm embarrassed to say. That's okay. I, well, it was, it was the before you say, like it was the uh, Malays era, right? Yeah. The late '70s and into the early '80s, we had the OPEC crisis. Exactly. So gas was getting expenses, right. expensive, and cars' power was being cut back was, so that yeah. they could be a little more fuel efficient. Exactly. So there was a lot of uh, emissions controls on sure. those cars. So the car was roughly um, 185 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. Which is, which is well, nothing were, today. It's not, but at that time, there were V8s producing 130 and 140 horsepower too. True, so, yes, yeah. yes. So, so, so I bet the torque number is much higher. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's all right, end. that's all right. But the car, yeah, and, and the car just, it, it's bulletproof. Like the, the engine, it, it just keeps on going. So you've had that car, geez, it's got to be 45 years anyway, eh? Yeah. Um, has it been your daily driver at certain periods? I know you don't drive it every day now, but would it have been your summer daily for 20 summers? It was. It was. It was. So that was my daily driver for high school. Yeah. Um, I not- hope high school didn't take 20 years. <laughs> it felt like it. <laughs> um, the, 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 yeah, so I drove it mostly in the summer. Sure. And in the winter, I had another old beater that I would drive yeah. around. Yeah. And uh, at one point, you know, with raising a family and things like that, the car sat for roughly 10 years, roughly. With no driving, no starting? Uh, I always started you the started. car. Yeah, that was one thing I did religiously was yeah. to start the car periodically and let the run uh, for about a half an hour. Or sure, so. yeah, sure. Just to do that. Um, until one year, uh, my son, Avery, uh, came to me. Said, whom I've met and whom I know is into cars. Who is into cars. Yeah. So, um, at one point he said, you know, Dad, uh, that's a cool car. Yeah, how and old was he when he said that? Oh, uh, he must have been in. Pre-driver's license? Pre, oh, much pre-driver's yeah. license. And, 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 and at that time, I, you know, I was explaining to Avery, you know, that they actually made fun of me in high school with that car. Yeah, I know the type. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got teased a lot with that car. Yeah. And so uh, Avery said, no, no, Dad, the car's really cool. And I said, well, okay. And he goes, you know, you should put it on the road. And I was kind of leery about doing that. So yeah. I, I basically uh, asked Avery, if you do well in school, I'll bring the car out. You're good. Road. You're a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I never knew that uh, he was part of the inspiration for you getting. He was. Going. He was a big part of the yeah. inspiration. I, in fact, there was one point in time that I was thinking of selling the car. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It was my wife yeah. who said, "No, don't sell the car because I think." Is that right? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think she, you know. She said, "I think you're going to regret selling that car." Yeah. Yeah. So I said, "Okay, we'll keep it." Um, but uh, so Avery went to camp one summer. And I overnight the, camp? Overnight camp. Yeah. And I put the car So you're not going to see him for a couple weeks. I'm not going to see him. I put the car back on the road. Oh. oh, oh, oh. And I picked him up. At the camp? At, at the end of his camp session? At, at the camp session. I picked him up. Uh, his face dropped. I said, oh my God, I can't believe you have it on the road. And That's I awesome. said, yep, I did it. And within five minutes of driving the car, People were giving me the thumbs oh, up. Oh, I bet they were. Honking the horn, yeah. and Avery turned to me and said, I told you, I told you it's a cool car. And ever since then, he shows me videos of Trans Ams in it, music videos yeah. or whatever sure. they are. He showed well, me it's funny things. you talk about high school. I think you got a couple of years on me, but not a lot. So when your car, when I graduated high school, your 75 Trans Am was 13 years old. I, was, I graduated high school in 1988. So from the time I got my driver's license till I was done high school, yeah. car was 10-ish years old. Yeah. And in those days, you could buy a rusty old beat up one for 500 bucks. Oh yeah. They- and a lot of guys in my high school did that. <laughs> and most of the ones we had in the student parking lot were, were kind of beaters. Yeah, they're- and they got made fun of the same way. Yeah. I wonder how many of them held on to them. I don't know. Yours was never a beater though. Uh, no, it was never really a beater. Um, but it, you know, it, it, 
you needed work here yeah. and there. Oh, and, sure, and, sure. And waxing and... And I'm thinking your car probably, that Trans Am probably has a five-digit odometer. I, Do you know how many miles are on it or no? Um, if I remember correctly, it's about 62,000 kilometers, 60, 70,000 kilometers. From you? Yeah. Not 160? No. That is really low. So you haven't driven it that much. No, well, it, it sat in the garage for 10 yeah, years. But that's so. 10 out of 45. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that's that's fun story talking <laughs> about your Trans Am. We've got some other things to talk about, so why don't we move on to the next topic. But um, a fun uh, topic for when I think of you and cars. Today, we're at our friend Sonny's place, and he's got this dream garage with all these exotics all around us. We pulled your car, one of your cars in for, for our shoot. Um, but you live in a more, we'll say, a more densely populated neighborhood. So you don't have the space that Sonny has. I drop by, it's usually when I need help with my computer or my car, <laughs> I'll drop by your place. And you, you've got a good size house with a big double garage and a two car driveway. But you've got, of course, you've got four cars in the driveway and two cars in the garage, a place that's packed. Yes, so, I, it's, it's really a tight space yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. We should probably get a picture of that to, to superimpose into the video yeah. for people. Yeah, we, we, we do squeeze in a Harley Davidson in there too. <laughs> oh, that's right. Avery owns a Harley Davidson. Right. Yeah. So, so there's two cars, a motorcycle, and. So, of uh, course, you do have the 81 920, which you spoke of quickly there. We kind of breezed right by it. Yeah. You bought that before you and I met. How did you come to decide you wanted a 928? Because at the time, you would have been a, I don't know, a 30, 30 plus year owner of a Trans Am. There aren't too many people who own both a Trans Am and a 928, yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, so uh, what really draw my attention to these cars were working at a hotel as a valet right. service. Right, yeah. yeah. And so the 928... So you worked at the Westin in downtown Toronto when it was in a location of the current Hilton. And you probably had got that job pretty soon after you got your driver's license. Yes. Perfect for the fancy cars you drive. Nice new driver. Yep. And it's funny when you and I speak of a car from that era, you've pretty well driven them all. I've driven them all. Yeah. 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 I've driven some really, really nice cars. And and the ones that really stood out uh, were the Porsche 930 Turbo. Okay. Yeah. Love that car. Yeah. Just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And the Porsche 928. Is that right? So you were driving them when they're pretty well new cars and parking them for people. Oh yeah, there were still the uh, placemats for your feet from the dealership. Yeah. Those paper placemats sure, that yeah, you would have. Yeah. Uh, I've sat in those. I many think some people call them floor mats. Place floor mats are for your dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> Go on. So yeah, so I've driven uh, quite a few cars, and there were a few cars that really stood out. Uh huh. Um, I could go on, it just, the list just goes on. Um, like but the that, Porsches were the ones that, that really drew you in. It, it drew me in. That mm. car was, uh, it, it just, the way it handled, uh, just really stood out. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the performance, the, uh, the, the, the responsiveness in the car. So the seed was probably planted in your late teens when you had this job as a valet at the, uh, at the West End. And you decide many years later that you're going to try and find a 928, or did it find you? Um, it, it, well, basically, I, I was looking for a 928. Yeah. And my, my wife and I were, were talking, and I, and I mentioned to her that I'd like to buy another car, another 928. Or it wasn't a 928 at the time. We were talking about buying a Porsche. Yeah. And she said, oh, yeah, let's do it. I, I, I'm okay with that. I said, okay, great. Yeah. So we went out, drove out. So many guys are watching this video right now. Wow, <laughs> it doesn't sound like my wife. <laughs> yeah, Paul is really great. She's really great. So she said, okay, let's go. So we drove out to take a look at a 928, and we pulled into the driveway, and she looked and said, where's the car? Uh -huh. I said, it's right there. Uh -huh. She goes, that's not a Porsche. What was she expecting to find a 911? A 911. Yeah. Yeah, and I said, no, it's not a 911. She goes, oh. oh. <laughs> I thought it's kind of spaceship looking. <laughs> she she was sort of taken by that, and she yeah. went, "Oh, okay." Um, 
so we, we, we test drove the car and, you know, reluctantly she sort of like, yeah, okay, I, I, let's get it. Sure. So we got a great deal on it. And, and so I, private sale off someone's driveway? Private sale yeah. off of someone's driveway. <clears throat> I wanted a car that was a bit of a beater um, so that I could work on it. Okay. And to uh, learn about working on cars and wrenching. Quite a car to choose to learn about working on cars. And so I found out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you yeah. should have bought a '68 Mustang <laughs> with a 200 cc yeah. you know, cubic inch engine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so um, you know there was just about everything on that car needed to be worked on. Sure. It was broken and needed fixing. So that was my first introduction to 928. So you got a good deal, but it sounds like you might have gotten what you paid for. Exactly. But I've seen I know the car today a little bit, and. Uh, I wouldn't quite call it a beater. It's not quite as presentable as this one. No. But mechanically, you know that car inside out, and oh. mechanically, it's it's almost bulletproof. It's bulletproof. It? Yeah. It's it's sound. The, 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 the car is just it, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, in fact, there are times where I truly enjoy driving the uh, eighty-one automatic uh -huh. than the uh, sure. eighty-eight. Yeah. Uh, it it just it's it's just gas and brake, gas and brake, yeah. and the car just. It does what well, you Well, pe people sort of criticize the 928s often because there are so many automatic versions, of automatic examples of them. But uh, it wasn't built as a sports car. It's a grand touring car. Well, that's where the debate is. Yeah. Um, some people will say it's, it's, it's a sports car because of some of its performance and people are saying that it's a, a GT car, a sure. grand touring car. Sure. I think there's it's it's somewhere in between. Well, we'll say this. Well, I think we'll agree on this. If you put a period 928 beside a period 911, as in those two models from the same year, every time the 928's the more grand touring car and the 911's the more sports car. Yeah. I, the, Where are yeah. you going to put your golf clubs in the 911, Eddie? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's just the way... You know, you could you could put this car on the track. Sure, you can. It, yeah, and, it, and it'll be very, very respectable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. Um, we took oh, it's it, way faster than the period 911 without a turbo. Oh, hands down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the the where this car just recently uh, impressed me was the drive right. down you, south. You were down to there was a, an event in Ohio. I, I can't remember if that was the beginning of your trip or the end. That was the end. That was the end. Yeah. But you, so you were down at, uh, it's the Blue Ridge Parkway in Kentucky, I yep. think it is. Yeah, so West Virginia. And Kentucky. you were not the only 928 there. No, no. There were roughly six of us driving through the Blue Ridge Parkway, did, six or seven of did us. Did several of you drive down together? Yes, we, yeah. all, we all drove down together. Six 928s driving the whole way down. Six nine two eight and one nine eleven nine eleven 4s. You must have been getting thumbs ups all day long. On the way down. <laughs> we had some really cool looks. Did, and did you bring this car or the eighty one? I brought the eighty eight. Yeah. Okay. And uh, wow, was it an eye opener? Yeah. Uh, How so? Well, the driving's very technical. Okay. And I don't think there was thirty seconds of a straightaway during that drive. Oh, fun! It was all. Right and left turns, yeah. hairpin turns, corkscrews. And did you have a navigator? Uh, well, we had one lead. Yeah. Avery was with me. So your son Avery was with you. Oh, that's always, great. Yeah, always. that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we all had radios, so yeah. we could communicate with each other and, sure. and, and let everyone, you know, heads up and aware of, of, of any obstacles. Yeah. And it was just an absolutely fantastic drive. Yeah, good. It was. It was beyond. Everyone's car perform. Everyone's car behave. Everyone's car behave. There were some minor glitches with, you know, uh, electrical, uh, like tail lights and things like that. Sure. But they're just minor. Yeah. But the cars all performed really well. Good. Yeah. Did everyone have functional air conditioning? Just a few. Not everyone, because <laughs> it would have been hot, wasn't it? It's hot. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and you're pushing your cars a little bit, probably. You're pushing the car, so um, I had the air conditioning on and off. 
Um, going up uh, mountains that are roughly 6,000 feet, yeah. um, it, it, it's a little hard on the engine with the air conditioning going on. Well, the engines are working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would turn it off and on but sparingly. I mean, 36-year-old car. Yeah. And it steps up to the plate. It's it completely stepped up to the plate. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was, um, it was very educational, too. You learned about the car? You learn about the car. Yeah. You learn about the driving. You're doing the driving of the car on the Blue Ridge Mountains and putting the car through its paces. Yes. And, and what's that experience like? It's a little different from driving on the uh, oh, it, 427. It, yeah, well, you have to keep your eyes on the temperature gauge. You sure. Know, keep your eye on the tachometer. Um, making sure that you're in the right gear. Yeah, I was going to say you're probably shifting gears a lot. Shifting gears a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, anticipating the inclines and yeah the, you know the me okay so you spent i guess like this six nine twenty eight seven nine eleven so seven cars is that right roughly or seven that? yeah so the, the the seven cars spent what four or five days down in the parkway yep and then you headed up to ohio for a particular 928 event correct and, and what was that all about so so there's um an event called the sharks discover Ohio, Ohio yeah. and uh, it's held by the local 928 guys there, Okay, and there were roughly 40 928s there, right. of all different calibers. Yeah, and, uh, so the 928, if memory serves, ran from 78 to 95. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And so that, <laughs> that's what, 18 model years? And there was a base, then an S, then an S4, and a GT, and then a GTS. Did you see all five? Uh, there was a GTS there. Yeah, they're worth is, so much money. Yeah. They're worth so they're much money. Valuable, yeah. Absolutely a stunning car. Uh -huh. uh, the color is called Lagoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a green, isn't it? It's a green. Absolutely. Green, green. Yeah, it's yeah. an absolute stunning color. Uh -huh. um, that one was sort of like a, a showstopper. Did you notice the license plate on that? Not what it read, but what state or province? I didn't see what what state it was, but it the I did notice the license plate. It was plate. personalized plate? Yes, yeah. and it was Lagoon. Oh yeah, that's good. That okay. was the license plate. Yeah. Um, there was another car there uh, from Quebec. Oh yeah. Uh, absolutely stunning and immaculate. Uh -huh. Absolutely immaculate. Uh, that gentleman won an award. There were awards, were they? Yeah. Judge Show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, People's Choice Awards. Yeah, fun. And, and uh, shows. Yeah. So, so we, was that Saturday and a Sunday? Uh, it, it started. It, it started on Thursday and ended on Sunday. Oh, that's quite an event. Yeah, and it also piggybacked onto another car show, uh, uh, which was much much larger. Uh -huh. there, there were about five hundred cars there. All makes, all makes, yeah. uh, North American, European yeah. cars yeah. were all there. Good. And and there were also um, competition there too. So when you're with the nine twenty eights only, you didn't tell people you had a Trans Am. But when you're with the domestic <laughs> people, you told them you had a Trans Am, and no one believed you, right? Yeah, my other car is a Trans Am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to get that license plate, uh, Frank. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. If you had limitless money, Eddie, you didn't have to worry about money at all. What, what kind of car would you get? You know, it's funny because Avery and I were talking without about worrying this. about resale value. Right. Yeah. So uh, that that's a great question. Hard to drive. Avery brought up the nine eighteen. Oh yeah. The Porsche nine eighteen yeah. stood out. Uh, nine eighteen Spider. Spider. I love the 250 Ferrari 250 GT. From the 60s. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a good thing money's no object. I'm <laughs> choosing that one. That's absolutely a stunning car. There's yeah. so many. When you're, when you're a car enthusiast. Yeah. It um, is hard to limit it to one. It, it's very, you, you know, you, you, you take pleasure in driving all of them. Because That's right. Because there's just all so many different personalities in the cars. Yeah. So, you know, and that's what I really enjoy, is that each car has its own personality. I agree, yeah, yeah. Especially cars of this era and before. Today, 
they're getting to be a little bit homogeneous. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So yeah, and that's what's fun about the collector car world, and that's what's fun about being part of it. So yeah, and, and the price of admission doesn't have to be two hundred thousand dollars. I suspect you paid quite a bit less for your eighty one nine twenty eight. Oh, you yeah. paid a little bit less for your Trans Am. I'm thinking. So <laughs> yeah, that's yes. great. Okay, so let's wrap up this part of our talk. Uh, we'll move on to the car. So I just want to thank everyone again for watching. And I want to thank Eddie for coming and making time for us today. It was good fun. And I just want to remind everyone again that, of course, we've got the car. Re In addition to this Collector Car Stories podcast, we've got the Car Reviews podcast, where every car available on our website is reviewed video style to supplement the detailed listings we already have. So, um, again, Eddie, thank you for making time for us. My pleasure. On the Collector Car Stories podcast.